When Harry met Sally, totally shook up ideas about what a rom-com could really be. I'll have what she's having. In the 35 years since its release, it's become an iconic autumn comfort movie and managed to remain engaging and relatable even as the times have changed. Let's take a look at the three key ingredients that have allowed When Harry Met Sally to stand the test of time. Well, I just want it the way I want it. In look, style, and demeanor, all of the characters in the film feel like real people that you could run into on the street in everyday life. They're not shiny and glamorous, but instead just average people trying to figure themselves out and find their way in the world. And importantly, both Sally and Harry are allowed to be specific individual people. They're not cardboard cutouts made as general as possible so that the maximum number of audience members can project themselves onto them, but instead are written to feel genuine in a way that's actually relatable. Sally is tired type A and high maintenance, and not ashamed of it. There are two kinds of women, high maintenance and low maintenance. Which one am I? You're the worst kind. You're high maintenance, but you think you're low maintenance. I don't see that. She might not always be 100% sure of herself, but she believes in herself enough to keep going with what she wants even when she gets pushback. That doesn't mean you're deep or anything. I mean, yes. Basically, I'm a happy person. So am I. And I don't see that there's anything wrong with that. And it's this inner confidence that allows her to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Harry, the cynical know-it-all, who believes that he has supreme insight into the way of the world and all of the people in it. Because eventually things move on and you don't take someone to the airport, and I never wanted anyone to say to me, how come you never take me to the airport anymore? It's amazing. You look like a normal person, but actually you are the angel of death. And though her style updates with the times over the course of the film, she's never forced to go through a movie makeover to be loved scenario. Just like with everything else, she knows how she wants to look and she doesn't feel the need to change herself for someone else. The relationships outside of the titular pair are important as well, because these characters are also allowed to be full people with their own lives and problems, which makes the entire story feel even more like a glimpse into a real world. I want you to know that I will never want that wagon wheel coffee table. Sally is career focused. She is determined to do well at her job and keep moving up the ladder. This trait was part of a larger trend both on screen and in real life at the time, as women had begun carving out their own paths in the workforce throughout the 1980s in a big way. And it continues to resonate today, as we still continue to come up against many of the same hurdles, particularly the idea that we can and should have it all. While so often it feels like having even one piece is difficult, much less all of it. And I'm gonna be 40! It's just sitting there like this big dead end. And it's not the same for men. And all of this is, of course, thanks to screenwriter Nora Ephron, who wasn't afraid to make her female characters complex and unapologetically intelligent, just like herself. Because Nora was a confident working woman herself and saw how her work and her success impacted her relationships, she was able to include those facets in her characters in honest ways. Her female characters aren't framed as bad or selfish for wanting to have a career and a romantic life, but she also wasn't afraid to dig into the more harsh realities of how difficult that could really be. Especially Especially in that era. I read your article about ice cream, and I have to tell you, I disagree with you about Hagen Dots from Raisin. I'm so vicious. <laughs> I'm a vicious person. 1986's Heartburn, based off of her semi-autobiographical novel, and for which she wrote the screenplay, was based on this issue coming to a head in her real life during her marriage to Carl Berenstein, one of the journalists who broke the Watergate scandal. Why are you angry at me for? I'm not angry at you! Well, then what are you shouting at me for? you're the only one that's here. <laughs> that story saw the main character attempting to stick it out through a bad relationship and ended with her finally leaving her philandering husband. You couldn't even pay cash. Like a normal philanderer, you charged everything. I mean, look at this flower. Look at all these flowers that you bought for her. So it makes sense that in her next screenplay, she was interested in taking a look at things going the other way, two people staying apart until they had each individually grown enough to be together in a stable relationship. Though the film has become associated with fall for many, it actually covers not only many seasons, but many years. We follow Sally and Harry through many seasons of their life, from leaving university to settling into unsure adulthood 12 years later, and many of the struggles in between. Someone is staring at you in personal growth. Both Sally and Harry live full lives in between their meetings. They try things out and sometimes fail, and through those ups and downs, find personal growth. They both enter long-term relationships that don't work out. Sally had been strung along for years with her ex, hoping that one day he would agree to settle down. All this time, I've been saying, 
that he didn't want to get married. But the truth is, he didn't want to marry me. Harry got married, but for all he thought he knew about women, he learns that he doesn't know and can't control everything. Marriages don't break up on account of infidelity. It's just a symptom that something else is wrong. Oh, really? Well, that symptom is my wife. These relationships aren't framed as just small little throwaway dalliances that were just there to waste time before the real love story began. They really do affect each of them deeply and change how they feel about themselves and relationships in general. This is a key part of each character's evolution. Taking chances and figuring out what you don't want and what doesn't work for you is an important part of building the life that you do want. To Harry and Sally, if Marie or I had found either of them remotely attractive, we would not be here today. Because Sally and Harry are polar opposites in many ways, they're also able to foster each other's growth by pushing each other to think about life and relationships from new perspectives. Most women at one time or another have faked it. Or they have faked it with me. It's just that all men are sure it never happened to them, and most women at one time or another have done it, so you do the math. The pair finally sleeping together isn't a grand romantic relationship solidifying moment, but instead something that does almost ruin their relationship for good. Because Harry hadn't yet grown out of his old ways. I can't do this anymore. I am not your consolation prize. The film doesn't posit that there's some magic movie moment that makes love work, but instead focuses on the reality that you have to put in the work. I love you. How do you expect me to respond to this? How about you love me too? How about I'm leaving? Not just settling for someone because they say they like you, or you're afraid you won't have any other options, but instead working both to get past your own fears and hangups, and to find someone that really fits into your life and loves you for you. One of the lasting central questions of the film surrounds the idea that Harry puts forth in the opening. Is that men and women can't be friends because the sex part always gets in the way. Given that the pair do end up together, it might seem like the film is suggesting that no, it isn't possible for men and women to be just friends. But really, we see how their friendship did enrich their lives. Even if they hadn't ended up together, they would have still been important parts of each other's lives and growth. And indeed, in the original script, they didn't end up together. It is so nice when you can sit with someone and not have to talk. Hmm? <laughs> what the film really seeks to explore is how integral that base of friendship, of genuine love and care of the other person as a full human being, is to having a functioning romantic relationship. The point is to figure out who you are and what you want, and then find the person that fits with that, as opposed to changing yourself, by choice or through movie magic, instantly to fit what someone else wants or thinks you should be like with so many rom-coms. I love that you get cold when it's 71 degrees out. I love that it takes you an hour and a half to order a sandwich. I love that you get a little crinkle above your nose when you're looking at me like I'm nuts. Real relationships don't have some instant spark followed quickly by a happily ever after. They're messy and complex and sometimes difficult. But that core of friendship allows partners to work through the tough times and enjoy the good. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. And all of this is driven home by the fact that the film doesn't end with a big wedding scene, holding that up as the goal or prize. Instead, the film closes with the pair being interviewed in the same way as the other couples interspersed throughout the film, opening up about their relationship and showing why it really works. The first time we met, we hated each other. No, you didn't hate me, I hated you. The second time we met, you didn't even remember me. I did too, I remembered you. The third time we met, we became friends. When Harry Met Sally continues to hold up, whether it's your first time watching or your 100th, because it's human relatable core and focus on real messy growth and love. It puts forth a vision of love that isn't some nebulous thing out there that you have to wait to come to you, but instead something you work towards, and if you're willing to take a risk, can find in the most surprising of places. We were friends for a long time. And then we weren't. And then we fell in love. That's the take. Click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.